Hey guys, so today is um, Thursday, um, May 2nd, and um, it's 2024, and I'm going to try and make today's a little bit shorter than I've been making them, so I'm going to do my best. Um, I am curious though, have you guys watched any good movies lately? Um, we're thinking about going to see a movie this weekend called Unsung Heroes, I don't know if you've seen in the theater, so it's called Unsung Heroes. Um, I think it's more of like a family-oriented movie, um, but I think that we're going to go see that this weekend. Um, I do know, I think maybe I shared with you, there were um, a couple movies, I may have shared this a few months ago, but there's a couple of movies called The Shack. Um, that was a book that I had read, um, and really good book a really good book but my favorite was they did a movie so the shack is a book and then it's also a movie and then they also did what's called restoring the shack and that was a movie that is actually free on I think it's Amazon Prime and it was it was really good it was so the shack wasn't based on a an actual factual true story, but it was based on incidents um, in this man's life. And um, restoring the shack is actually the guy going through the steps of things that had happened um, in his life to bring about the movie called The Shack. And why, um, why he why he did it and then kind of the behind scenes to it um, of restoring what was lost um, which in the movie it was about a little girl that was kidnapped um, from a campground and then um, unfortunately she didn't make it and the the whole movie is talking about it's a father who loses this little girl and then of course the whole family that is destroyed by it because of the incidents that that led up to the kidnapping of the little girl so there was a lot of guilt in the siblings and then the parents for what had happened the mother and the dad and but the restoring the shack that movie that was so good that was so good um, so I highly recommend that. Um, it helps us understand why bad things happen to good people and how we can take those bad incidents, those things that happen in our life and see the good in it and um, come out on top instead of in the muck and in the bottom and dwelling on what could have, should have, you know, all those things that, all, it always goes through our minds, like what would have happened if, if I had done this, if I had said that, or whatever it is. And so restoring the shack um, was really good for me. Um, it definitely helped with bitterness and resentment, unforgiveness. Um, it helped me see people and see situations with the heart of the Father, the heart of Father God. Um, and I, so I just highly recommend it. So those are two. So I haven't seen Unsung Hero this weekend. That's our intention is to go see it. So I'll be able to let you know what I think of the Unsung Heroes. But I have someone else. I have another friend who did go see it and they said it was really good. And then the two movies that we did see, and it's on Amazon Prime, is The Shack. You can also get that on Audible. And Restoring The Shack. I'm not sure if it's on Audible or not. Um, but I know it is Amazon Prime. It's a movie and it's free. Um, a book that I highly recommend um, that I just finished was called The Awe. Actually, I think it's just Awe of God. It might say The awe a w e of god um but that was so good actually any of john bevere b-e-v-e-r-e -E, any of his books are incredible and he's such and he narrates all of his books on audible so you get 
I, I just like it. I like the tone of his voice. Um, it's very engaging. Um, you don't get tired of listening to it. Um, and he, he, he's just very, he always, um, mixes in his own personal stories, his life stories into what he's teaching and into whatever it is that he has written a book about, which is, to me, it's very engaging. It's an excellent way to write a book is to incorporate your own personally, your own personal stories into it. Um, <clears throat> So those are just some recommendations that I wanted to share with you. So any of John Bevere's books um, on Audible, um, well, you can get them anywhere. They're all really, really good. And then the movies, Shack, Restoring the Shack, and then we're going to go see Unsung Hero this weekend. So I'll be able to let you know what I think of that one. Um, I had, honestly, I'm not, we hardly ever go to movies, so I'm not sure what other movies are going on, but... Um, if you've seen any lately, I'd love to find out what are some good ones. Um, okay, back to your identity. I do want to teach you some things. Um, see the view that we have today. Handsome Warren. Let me see if I can show. Oh, there's Warren and Clara. And there's our beautiful princess, Clara Joy. Um, I was going to go outside, but I'm like, no, I'm sitting at my desk. I actually cleaned out my office. I do need to go through stacks of paper and decide if I'm going to keep them or toss them. Um, but I'm in the middle of um, researching some, um, some case law for studies. So um, I decide why not just create my video right now. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to remind you guys who you are, your identity in Jesus Christ. Your identity, as much as it feels like our identity is in the world, and our identity is just who we are, um, that's deception. Um, our identity, our true identity, our spiritual identity, which will last for eternity in either heaven or hell, um, that etern that identity was created by God in heaven, and it will go with us wherever it is. And so, we're, so will our likeness, so will our um, everything about us, our emotions, our everything is going to go either place, either to heaven or hell. <clears throat> but I'm not talking about um, heaven or hell right now. But I do want to talk about your guys's identity. So. Um, I'm just going to read kind of, um, Jesus is coming back for his bride. So there's two things. There's, um, when Jesus comes back to return, um, he's coming for his bride. And I'm going to just read some scriptures about what he's going to look like first. So when he comes back in Revelations 1 verse 13 through 16, it says, the Son of Man was clothed with a robe which reached to his feet and with a girdle of gold about his breast. His head and his hair were white like, the, like white wool, as white as snow, and his eyes flashed like a flame of fire. Um, his feet glowed like burnished bright bronze as it refined in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and from his mouth there came forth a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun shining in full power at midday. So we see this, this attribute, this, um, this vision of what Jesus is going to look like when he comes back to return for his bride. Um, those who have set themselves apart for him just for him as their bride now of course if you are a friend with the world if you are i, I love this analogy one time someone said <clears throat> you're holding on to jesus's hand while you're kissing the devil or you're holding on to jesus's hand while you're holding on to the devil's hand like jesus is not coming back for that bride Jesus is not coming back for someone who is divided between the world and between him. 
Like nobody would marry, John Bevere says this so good in his book, The Awe of God, which he talks about the fear of the Lord. Jesus is not going to tolerate somebody who speaks out of one side of their mouth and then out of the other side of their mouth and they don't do what they say. So somebody who loves Jesus, somebody who is walking a godly lifestyle, one they will profess it and they will do it. They're not going to just profess it and then do something different. Jesus, in my personal opinion, he's not coming back for that person. He's not coming back for somebody who is fake and who just professes to be um, a follower of Christ. And then, and then they say, oh, but my heart, but my heart. No, Jesus is coming back for the bride, the one who is spotless and clean, the one who surrenders themselves, who says, I'm not going to do the things of this world, even though they seem godly. They seem like a good thing. I'm not going to do the things of this world. I'm not going to dance with the world. I'm not going to put the world above Jesus Christ. I'm going to put Jesus above the world. And if Jesus leads me into the world, if Jesus um, guides me to do things within the world, then I will do that. But I'm not going to do it without him. Um, why would it? Yeah. I mean, I could go on and on. So, um, I highly recommend that book, The Awe of God. Um, anything where you're learning about the fear of the Lord, I think that is so important because I truly believe our country has totally lost the fear of the Lord, the fear of God. They have, they think that he's not going to do anything. They don't think that he is, um, going to make judgment, um, He's going to make judgment, and his judgment will be against the church first. So the body of believers, the body of Christ who profess to know him and follow him, he's going to judge all of us first before he judges the world. And that will go with all of us who believe in Jesus Christ. Um, yeah. So, and then it goes on to say in Revelation 19, um, verses 11 through 16, I saw heaven open and behold, a white horse appeared. The one who was riding, it is called faithful, trustworthy, loyal, incorruptible, steady and true. And he passes judgment and wages war in righteous holiness, justice and uprightness. His eyes blaze like a flame of fire and on his head are many kindly crowns, diadems. And he has a title um, a name which he alone knows or can understand. He is dressed in a robe, dyed by dripping blood, and the title by which he is called the Word of God. And the troops of heaven, clothed in fine linen, dazzling clean, followed him on white horses. From his mouth goes forth a sharp sword, which he can smite, that would be afflict and strike the nations. And he will shepherd and control them with a staff, a scepter, a rod of iron. He will tread the winepress and on the fierceness of his wrath and indignation of God, the all ruler, the almighty, the omnipotent, and on his garment robe and on his thigh, he has a name title inscribed, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That is, that description, oh my gosh, that is so powerful. He, that is a powerful son of God, Jesus Christ. Or like I like to call him by his Hebrew name, Yeshua HaMashiach. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And he's your, I know this sounds weird for the men. He's your husband to be. He is the one. Imagine like you marry, and some people have a hard time with this because their husbands have been unfaithful. Um, maybe they've been um, manipulative. Um, maybe they are narcissistic. <laughs> And so people have a hard time with this, but they are a kind, loving, caring, and a fierce husband who's got your back. He will protect you at all costs. So no matter female or male, he's your husband to be, and he will protect you at all costs. Think of it as a very, very protective husband. Someone who is jealous of you. Not jealous as in um, they don't like... I, Hmm, what's the best way to say it? He he wants to protect you at all costs. 
<clears throat> so when you're struggling with a low self-esteem, self-hatred, or any kind of identity problems, remember who you are and then remember who your husband to be is, which we are all because we're spirit. We're not male and female in heaven. We're spirits. I mean, maybe we are, I don't know, but we're spirits. Um, just remember who you're engaged to. Remember who the King of Kings is and he will always protect you. He will. And the, there may be times that you're like, oh, but he didn't protect me from this or he didn't protect me from that. And I struggle with that myself. Um, but when we get to heaven, we'll understand and see the bigger picture. We'll see what he did protect us from. Like how many times we don't know how the Lord saved our life. We don't because we will never know all those things that he kept us from. We don't know what the bigger picture is and why I have been removed from you, why I, why there's this constant struggle to keep me away from you. We will never understand that until we get to heaven. Now, it might, God may give us that revelation now. God may give you guys that revelation now. He may give it to us supernaturally, spiritually. I have some, some ideas, some inclinations. I feel like the Spirit has dropped into me. Um... And that has fueled me um, to know that this is a much bigger cause. This isn't just about me. This isn't just about you guys. This is about the greater good of humanity and the kingdom of God. Because when all this is said and done, it's all going to be rolled up. Like, well, as it says in Revelations, the earth will be rolled up into a scroll. Like everything. It's going to be gone. It's going to be done. Again, our life is like as quick as we blink our eye. That's how our life is compared to eternity. So what we're doing now, um, it matters. It matters for eternity because actually what, everything that we do here now um, will impact our future. It will impact where we go, if we're going to heaven or if we're going to hell, depending on what we do with Jesus Christ. And then second, if we're going to heaven, there are rewards, eternal rewards. And I know for me, I have a hard time. I'm like, oh, it doesn't matter. Like, I just want to do whatever it is that the Lord has called me to do. But there are some people who their, their, their thing is eternal rewards. They're going for those eternal rewards that will last in eternity, which is amazing. And it's incredible, like things that... You know, maybe it's our, our eternal homes, whatever is being built. Maybe like, I mean, I, I'm not asking the Lord for it, but I would love a home up against the mountains on a private lake and, but beautiful and the weather and like all these things like, but then maybe even a home on the cliff of an ocean somewhere. Um, there are eternal rewards and I'm not asking Jesus for that, but those are like little desires in my heart. Um, but there are eternal rewards that God's going to give us. Um, even our, our job, I wish I could remember the book. I'll try and remember it in that tomorrow when I post my video, but John Bevere talks about this. Well, there's a book and he talks about rewards and he talks about, um, how, in heaven will give will be given jobs will be given authority some people will be given authority to rule over nations with Jesus like they will be like his right hand man and then there will be others who will be the groundskeeper um, but there is a whole kingdom there's a kingdom of God even in heaven where everything works together um, and there are certain job positions that we will be placed into based upon what we're doing now, which is wild and crazy to think about. Um, but in this book, he, he, he's very scriptural. So everything is referenced by the Bible, um, which is really neat. And that's really important to me because if you can't give me a scripture, I have a hard time believing you. Um, it sounds wonderful and it sounds amazing. Um, so I will try and quote the book tomorrow, but <clears throat> I just want to let you know that all the things we do now here on this earth, it matters for eternity, not just where we're going, heaven or hell, but it matters what our position is in heaven. 
Like, are we going to be ruling nations with Jesus? Like, how incredible would that be? To be set as a ruler, to work side by side with Jesus Christ and with Father God. Like, we, it's, there's just so much to be had. But <clears throat> I'm going to end now with a prayer since I'm already at 20 minutes. Father God, I just thank you so much for warning Clara. Thank you, Lord, for trusting me to be their mom. Thank you for giving me wisdom, knowledge, and discernment to know how to pray for them. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in, in our lives, in the unseen realms. We don't understand it, Lord, but I know that you are a good father, you're a good God, and I trust you in this. Lord, I thank you for what you've done and what you're continuing to do. Lord, I ask that you please expose and uproot everything. Let nothing stay hidden. Lord, bring it into the light in each one of our lives, including everyone who is around us, anyone we have direct or indirect relationship with, Lord. I ask that you uproot it and bring it all into the light. Expose it. Releasing a Freedom of Information Act just like the courts would. I thank you, Father God. Lord, I thank you for tenacity, patience, and endurance in this. Um, I don't even want to call it a fight because Jesus already won it. But get in, in our life, Lord. Give us endurance, patience. And, in ta and tenacity. Father, I thank you for showing your love to Warren and Clara in ways that I cannot. We thank you, Father God, in your name. Amen. I love you guys so much. Blessings to you guys. I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.